في غار حراء كان حبيبي يخلو وحيدا روحا تناجي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات عمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يذله فلا هالي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لإيلاف قريش إيلافهم رحلة الشتاء والصيف فليعبدوا رب هذا البيت الذي أطعمهم من جوع وآمنهم من خوف This surah is called surah to Quraysh Quraysh We all know that our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He came from the tribe called Quraysh The name of his tribe was called Quraysh And there's one hadith in Muslim Imam Muslim rahimahullah He narrates There's one hadith states that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected this one person called Kinana selected him from the progeny of Ismail alayhi salatu wa salam and from Kinana this was where Quraysh originated and from this Kinana Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected the Banu Hashim Banu Hashim Hashim as we all know is the great grandfather of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam great grandfather Hashim then you get Banu Hashim Banu means the children the children of Hashim and Abdul Muttalib was the grandfather the great grandfather was Hashim so and from this Banu Hashim the clan of Banu Hashim is clan is called Banu Hashim and from Banu Hashim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected me meaning Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was from the tribe called Quraysh and this tribe Quraysh the word Quraysh it also has a meaning you should know the meaning of Quraysh Quraysh one meaning of Quraysh comes from the word Qarsh Qarsh means a very powerful creature yeah, so Quraysh was very powerful they used, whenever they had combat with any other people, they used to always win. Uh, from looking at that, people called him Quraysh. Another meaning of Quraysh is unity. Another medium of Quraysh is to search. They used to search for the poor. And they would search for the poor and they would go and assist them. So people used to call him the Quraysh. Another meaning of Quraysh is those who do transactions of business for their livelihood. And the, the Quraysh were famous for the for the business transactions. So anyway, this surah is called Surah to Quraysh. And in this surah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions about the Quraysh, how they used to, in the time before Islam, there used to be a lot of looting and robbery and insecurity. But even though there was all these things going on. There was lots of insecurity, lots of looting and robbing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the Quraysh a maqam, an honor. He gave them that respect that whenever they used to go, because Makkah was a barren land, there was no vegetation, so they had to go out and get their crops, they had to get their provisions. So sometimes they would go to Yemen, they would go to Yemen in the winter, and for, for their business and to get their provisions and sometimes they would go to Sham Syria, Lebanon, all these places in the summer so when they used to travel and when they used to go to these places everyone used to respect them everyone used to honor them why? because they came from Mecca they came from the house of Allah, the Kaaba was situated there so everyone used to love them everyone used to you know respect them so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning these 
different bounties that was given to the Quraysh. That we give you all of these bounties. So, in, you should be grateful for these bounties. And how should you be grateful? You should be grateful by worshipping Allah. You know, very famous, our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, once he was in sijda, and he was performing such long salah, you know, so his wife asked him, what's, why are you, why are you, why are you reading such long salah for? You know, what's the need? He said, should I not be a grateful servant of, to Allah? Should I not be a grateful servant to Allah? The more bounties a person has, he should show the gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has done so much for me. We should be more gratitude. When we, when we get closer to Allah, we become more grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why we should try our best to become, you know, showing our, our gratitude. That's why there are many, many du'as as well. You know, there's one du'a in the morning that it comes in hadith to the nurse, meaning the person who is this du'a in the morning, you know, he has thanked Allah for all of the bounties that Allah has bestowed upon him. Allahumma ma asbaha bi min ni'matin aw bi ahadin min khalqik fa minka wahdak La sharika lak, falaka alhamdu, walaka shukr. This one dua we should try to recite in the morning, daily. It comes in daily. You recite this dua. It's as though you have done, done shukr. And thank Allah for all of it. Allahumma ma asbaha bi min ni'mah. Ya Allah, all those ni'mat. Bi ahadim min khalqik. Anything, all the ni'mat that you have given me. Faminka wahdak. is only from you. All the ni'mat, all the bounties. Is only from you. For me, kawahdat la sharika lak. Allah has no partners. And walak al falak al ham walak al shuk. That's one dua we should try to recite. Also, I'd like to encourage the brothers. You know, there's one sunnah salah that our beloved Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to perform, and which we call is called salat al duha. Yeah. One is after the sun rises, then you read two rakats. Then you get the reward of one accepted Hajj and Umrah. And then if you read another two rakats, which we all call Ishraq, Satul Ishraq, you know, you get the reward as Allah will suffice for all you need for that day, Allah make everything go sim ease with you. But there's one salah called Salat al Duha. You can read that those two rakats immediately after Ishraq as well. You know, but the best time to read that is it comes in the hadith when the pebbles start become heated and that time around 9 30 9 30 10 o'clock during the day 9 o'clock 9 30 that time is the best time to read this so it comes in hadith about, about that salah that it is a charity for every joint in the body you know nabi sallallahu has mentioned many to say subhanallah is a charity to say alhamdulillah is a charity you know, to remove an obstacle from the path is a charity you know to show someone who's lost his, his way is a charity and then he mentioned to the nearest meaning that to read two rakats Salat al-Duha is a charity a sadaqa for every joint in the body reading Salat al-Duha is a charity for every joint in the body yeah. our Ustad used to tell us Mona Abdul Hamid Sahib he used to always mention the person who is regular in reading these two rakats if you are very regular in reading these two rakats daily salat al-duha insha'Allah Allah will save you from all joint pains yeah. will save you from all joint pains arthritis and this and that Allah will save you from all those pains why? because daily you're giving charity on each joint you're giving charity on behalf of each joint you know? so that's one we should try to bring in our life I've seen our Hafiz Saab, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, Hafiz Patel Saab. He was very particular with this salah. Yeah, even our Ustad, Mawlana Fazl Rahman Saab, all the Akabi, mashallah. They are so particular about these two rakats. So we should try to bring in our life. It's simple. You know, you see around 9 o'clock, you know, before you leave to go to work, or as soon as you get to work, you read two rakats in the, in the office. You know, wherever you're going, just read two rakats. You go to the work site, you know, read two rakats. You know, make intention. Salat al duha you know, so this is a very, you know, a very important salat we could try to read as well. Also, in these ayats, there's one ayat, 
It's going to come and tell us about rihla. Rihla means traveling. You know, traveling fi shita wa sayf. Shita means in the winter and sayf means in the summer. So when we are traveling as well, there are some very simple etiquettes we should try to bring in our life. Simple etiquettes. You know, one simple dua which comes in Muslim Sharif. In Muslim Sharif, it comes one dua. When you come to any locality, if you read the following dua, you come to any lo locality and you read the following dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not allow anything to harm you till you leave that place. Very simple dua. We might know it, we might know it but it's for us to implement it now. And what is that dua? أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق We should try to read this dua. Whenever you come to any locality, try to read this dua. It comes in hadith in Muslim Sharif that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not allow any harm to you to befall you until you leave that place. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says لإيلاف قريش Allah says لإيلاف إيلاف means safety, <coughs> ease. And the word lam, li, means for, because. So Allah says, li ila fi Quraysh. Because of the safety enjoyed by Quraysh. Uh, they used to have safety. Everyone around, all the Arab, outside of Mecca, everyone, there's, everyone is, is not, is not in ease. They're feeling, you know, no, unsafe. There's no safety around. People are stealing, people are robbing. But people of Makkah, they have safety. Aman. Our beloved, our Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. He made the dua for Makkah. With the call Ibrahim Rabbij al Hadha al Balada Amina. Oh Allah, make this balad, make this city Amina, safe. Make it peace. In the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, there's so much lessons to learn. You know, we should try to read these du'as of Ibrahim, the du'as that come in Quran. As well, you see our elders, when they make du'a, and you see they're making du'a, normally they start with the du'as of Quran. When they're making the du'a, you see when they're making it loudly, they make the du'a of the Quran. So this one du'a of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, coming in the 13 Jews in Surah Ibrahim. He says, وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ جَعَلْ هَذَا الْبَلَدَ آمِنَا Oh Allah, make this city Makkah, make this city Amin, make it safe. And then he said, وَجْنُبَنِي وَبَنِيَّ أَنْ نَعْبُدَ الْأَصْنَامِ And look what the dua, what Ibrahim is making dua. Oh Allah, save me. This is the Imam of Tawheed. You know, this is the person who teaching Tawheed and oneness of Allah for his whole life. But what dua is he making? Oh Allah, save me and save my children that we ever worship idols. Yeah. Save us from worshiping idols. Can you imagine that? The Imam of Tawheed who taught, who, t who preached Tawheed his whole life. His whole life, he's making dua, Allah save me from shirk. This is the dua. Nabi Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam make dua every day as well. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ash-shirk. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ash-shaytan wa shirki. Save me from shaytan and his shirk. That's a dua we should all read. Yeah, sometimes we make statements of shirk we don't even know. Statements of shirk. That because of him this is happening. Or because of me this happened. If I wasn't there, this did not happen for you. This is all shirk. It's not you. You didn't do anything. Allah is the doer. Yeah. And then in the dua, he made another dua. He says, Rabbana inni askantu min dhurriyati biwanin ghayri dhi zara. Wallah, I've Please, my family to stay in a valley, which talking about Makkah, has no zara, no crops, no vegetation, nothing. In the Baytikal Muharram. Why did they place them for? Why did they place them there for? Rabbana liyaqim al salah. So that they establish salah. And then, look what dua he said after that. He says, Faj'al af'idatan min al nas tahwi ilayhim. Make the hearts of the people. Incline towards them. Yeah. Make the hearts of the people incline and make them become beloved. From here as well. Ulama state, for anyone to do the effort of deen, you have to become beloved. 
If you're not beloved, no one's going to help you. No one's going to be around you. You have to make du- like he's making dua, Allah, incline the hearts of the people towards them. That's why our beloved Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Al mu'minu ma'lafun." A believer, ma'lafun, is an embodiment of love. It's a place of love. ولا خير في من لا يألف ولا يؤلف. And there's no goodness in that person who doesn't show love, and love is not shown to him. That's a believer. Then he made dua. He said, "Carry on." He said, "Rabbi jalni muqim al Like a beautiful dua. He said, "Oh Allah, make me a person who establishes salah." Rabbi jalni muqim al salah. وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِي And not only me, make my family also such that they also establish salah. And he said, رَبَّنَا وَتَقَبَّلْ دُعَا Oh Allah, accept my dua. Oh Allah, accept my dua. تَقَبَّلْ دُعَا Then he said, رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لِي This is the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Oh Allah, forgive me. وَلِوَالِدَيَّ Making dua for you. وَالِدَيْنِ And forgive my parents. Ibrahim alayhi salam. Dua mentioned in the Quran. Oh Allah forgive me. And forgive my parents. And the believers. الحساب, and the day of judgment. Yeah. Forgive me and all the believers. So anyway, this is a dua we should try to recite as well. It comes in the Quran. We should try to read that every day. Rabbi Jalni Mukim ومن ذريتي make me such that I establish salah make my family establish salah ربنا وتقبل دعاء oh Allah accept my dua oh Allah accept my dua anyway so in this surah Allah mentions لإيلا في قريش because of the safety enjoyed by Quraysh إيلا فيهم نحلة الشتاء والصيف إيلا فيهم the ease of traveling رحلة رحلة means to travel the ease in traveling شتاء شتاء means Winter, they used to travel in the winter to Yemen. Was Saif, and Saif means summer. They used to travel in the summer, they used to travel to Sham. Yeah, again, here was Saif, was sod. If you say was safe, you don't know what safe means? Saifullah, Saifullah means the sword of Allah, safe, the scene. Yeah, this is a sod, so just a small little change of the word. Yeah, safe and Saif. Very important that we read a sword here. رحلة الشتاء والصيف. Let's read صيف there. Yeah, صيف means summer. So I was mentioning رحلة means traveling. Very basic. When we enter our car, yeah, it comes in hadith. Ali رضي الله عنه says that once Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam he went onto his conveyance and as soon as he sat, he said Bismillah. Whenever you open your car and sit down. Bismillah. Yeah. Try to get that sunnah. Bismillah. And then when he sat down, he said, Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Simple surah. Simple sunnahs we bring in our life. Bismillah. Then you sit down. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Then you write the dua. Subhanalladhi sakhara lana hadha wa ma kunna lahu muqanineen wa inna ila rabbina la munqalibun. We should learn that dua as well. Read that dua. Some narrations have you say Alhamdulillah three times Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah And some narration mention Allahu Akbar three times as well With Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar three times So you should get this in our life You say Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar And the dua we just read And there's one more dua That we should try to recite That Ali radiallahu ta'ala an says I saw Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I heard Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reading this dua. Subhanak, inni zalamtu nafsi, faqfir li, innahu la yaqfiru dhunuba illa anta. What does that dua mean? Subhanak, Ya Allah, you are pure. Ya Allah, glory to be to you. You have no faults. Subhanak, inni zalamtu nafsi, oh Allah, I have wronged myself. Faqfir li, forgive me, innahu la yaqfiru dhunuba illa anta. No one can forgive Except you. So Ali radiallahu ta'ala says, I saw Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam read this dua and he smiled. He read this dua and he smiled. So you will see many people sometimes after reading the dua they smile. You know, so ulama say, if you have your 
Sati is with you, you smile at him. And if no one's there, you look in the sky and says, and smile. You know? So, Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, with him was one of his students. His name was also Ali. So, the student asked Ali radiallahu ta'ala, how come you're smiling? How come you're smiling? You read a dua, you're smiling? You know? You read a, you read a dua, you just smile. So, Ali radiallahu ta'ala told his student, the same question I also to ask Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why are you smiling? How come you're smiling? So, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, just, That dua which you're asking, Oh Allah, forgive me. I've wronged myself. No one can forgive except. So he says that when a person reads this dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets so happy and he makes announcement that my banda knows that no one can forgive sins except me. My banda knows, my slave knows that no one can forgive sins except me. So Allah gets happy. So that's why I'm smiling. So Ali radiallahu ta'ala says, that's why you see me smiling. Because I saw my beloved smiling, that's why I'm smiling. So that's why ulama also mentioned that after reading this dua, we should make a gesture of smiling. So my teacher used to say, don't take man mad. <laughs> you know, that he got off. Why are you smiling for no reason? You know, so there's a reason behind that smiling there. So anyway, Allah mentioned these bounties. And after mentioning these bounties, right away Allah says, فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ These people need to leave out this worshipping of idols and worship رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ Worship, they need to worship the Rabb of هَذَا الْبَيْتِ of this home, of this house, the Kaaba, the Rabb of هَذَا الْبَيْتِ الَّذِي أَطْعَمَهُمْ مِنْ جُوعِ That Allah, that being أَطْعَمَهُمْ That gave them food مِنْ جُوعِ Jur means hunger. Yeah. That Allah who gave them food while they were hungry, in hunger. Yeah. They had nothing around them. But Allah gave them food. Wa amanahum min khawf. Wa amanahum. Amanahum means to give security. Allah gave them security min khawf. In times of khawf and fear. Yeah. When they're everybody around them, all the other cities except Mecca, all of them were insecure. But still, Allah gave the people of Mecca security so this last ayat Allah mentions أَطْعَمَهُمْ مِنْ جُوعِ there's one dua of when someone feeds you, you know, when someone feeds you when you when people give us food you know when people feed you there's a dua that we should try to recite Muslim duas our teacher used to emphasize this duas over because we do this every day so we need to get this in our life these daily occurrences happen so these daily occurrences should be in our life What's that dua when someone feeds you? أَكَلَ تَعَامَكُمُ الْأَبْرَاقِ وَصَلَّتْ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَأَفْطَرَ عِنْدَكُمُ الصَّائِبُ أَكَلَ تَعَامَكُمُ الْأَبْرَاقِ May the pious eat your food. Yeah. When someone, when you go and eat by someone's house, someone gives you food to eat, or someone brings food to you, you should read this dua. أَكَلَ تَعَامَكُمُ الْأَبْرَاقِ May the pious eat your food. وَصَلَّتْ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ May the angels make dua for you. وَأَفْتَرَ عِنْدَكُمُ الصَّائِمُونَ And may the fasting people break their fast by you. May you feed the fasting people. So our Ustad used to say, you know what, this dua is a very beautiful dua. You know why? Because if the pious eat by you, if the pious eat by you, he used to say, that is 100% commission. You know why? Whatever good deeds they do, whatever teaching they do, whatever effort of deen they do, whatever they do is 100% commission. He says like, he give the example, like a person, he has a, a car, a jeep, a car, and he goes to the gas station, you fill up, you fill him up 100%, you know, 100, fill up, fill up the gas tank to 100, wherever he goes, you know, wherever he goes, he's going to go from this place to that place, why? Because, fill up, Thank for that. Understand? So he used to mention, mashallah, that when a person eats, 100% commission, you're going to pray. If you meet between Maghrib and Isha, you give him food. So he's going to pray Isha now. Uh, Isha Sawab. Uh, he's going to teach now after Isha, teaching Sawab. He's going to get up a Tahajjud, maybe, inshallah, he's abroad. He's a very pious person. That Tahajjud Sawab. Then he's going to pray Fajr. Fajr Sawab. After, uh, after Fajr, Zikr Sawab. You know? Z reward for all. So much reward, so much rewards. And Mawlana Ashraf Ali Tani used to say, one of the best people to feed is the students. 
one of the best people to feed is the students. Why? Because effect of food lasts in the body for 40 days. So you feed students. So, you know what students do the whole day? These students always do. I just tell you, all those big shakes. The whole day you're reading Quran. You know? The whole day you're reading Quran, Quran. You know? So the whole day they're reading Quran. Morning Quran, evening Quran, nighttime studying. You know? So Quran, Quran. So you feed the students. So all of that reward you get. You know? So that's why he used to, our study used to always encourage us that we should feed, feed ulama, feed the students, the effect of that. That's why you see that when the elders come into our island, a lot of people they're rushing. You know? Maybe they, they know this, that's why, you know, that the effect of food lasts for so long. So that's why if you want to, that would, that would, that would, you know. So that's why we should also try our best, you know, to feed ulama, feed students. And وَصَلَّتْ عَلَيْكُ malaika, And the angels made the angels. And when, and he used to say, I was used to say, when the pious come at your home, you know something very important? They don't come alone. They come with a whole group. So you need barakat. You can't feed the pious without barakat. You need lots of barakat. You know, because they come with a group, you know, and also, you, you also, he says in this dua, you're asking for akhlaq, because if you're, if you have a, a small heart, if you're not generous, you can't feed people, so you need to be generous, so it's asking for generosity, and he used to say, if you, this also in this dua, in this dua, you're asking for afiyat, because if your house burned down, if there's problems in your home, you're not going to invite nobody to your house, you know, so this dua is actually asking Ya Allah, give this person afiyat as well. So this dua is a very beautiful dua. Oh Allah, may the pious people eat at your home. And the angels make dua, keep on making dua after you. And, and the sa'imin, the people. When you feed one fasting person, just a date, you get the reward for the whole fast. You know, So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost give us the tawfiq. It's very important for us. You know, we should feed others. And also when people feed us, we should make these du'as, bring these du'as in our life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost give me the tawfiq and all the tawfiq.